Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own army of clones using only Final Cut Pro and, for added effect, a green screen. So, welcome to the workstation. Now, uh, here on the screen you can see that I've started up Final Cut Pro. And on the side here, you can check my cursor, I have the first sample. This is the footage of me in front of the clones. And this is the footage of the clones. Now, if you notice carefully here, you'll see that it's all one long footage where I actually change places and just sit around in various different locations. Uh, and I'll show you how to put that together to make it look like there's three of me instead, or four if you count the one in front, instead of just one of me or two of me with the green screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this video here. I'm going to show you how to do the basic clones. Now, you don't have to have someone talking in front of you or in front of your clones, you can have one of the clones talking. Now if you want to have clones talking to each other, that'll require a little bit of synchronizing work, but it's nothing that's too complicated. So the first thing I'm going to do now with this video is I'm going to find the parts of each clone that I want to use in the segment. Now the intro was only a few seconds long, so I only need a few seconds of the clones. So I will look th if I look through the footage here, I can see I can see like a fast forward, I guess if I drag around the cursor. And I will pick a moment that I find suits best for what's going on basically. Yeah, this this moment here seems all right. Now I'm going to use the shortcut command blade to cut the scene into two parts here. As you can see, it's now two parts. I can stack them if I want, but I don't want to do that, so Command Z to undo. And now I will find the end. Where do I want the end? Essentially, bring it all the way to the end to make sure you have enough. So there we go. I'm going to do this. That'll be plenty enough. Now you can select the unwanted footage and click backspace to delete it. So now here I'm going to move to this. I'm going. To, I'm going to move on to the second position. So now you can see, in the video, I actually got up and moved to the second position. And now I'm going to do the same idea. So I'm going to go find a place where I find it works right. So about here. You know, I sort of look a little bored. I'm not doing any of the talking in uh, this scene, so it's normal that I'm a little bored. So I'm going to take this scene right here. So again, same concept, Command B, and that will cut our scene half. Now at this point, we can cut, we can get rid of this part here, the sort of transition from me sitting down to standing up. So backspace to get rid of that as well. And now, like last time, pretty much go to the end. So that's about here for me. And now we're gonna do this one more time. All right, so now I have all three of my videos of my, I have all three videos of my clones, of me in all three different positions. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to stack them. So we're actually gonna do it one by one. So I'm gonna stack this, the last clip I took on top of the other one, and you can stack as many as you want. Next, you're gonna go into the toolbars here. Now, there's this little section here. here uh, me, it's already selected, it's highlighted in blue, and you're going to want to click on that to open up this little menu. And then you're going to scroll down to the little tab that says masks. Uh, the masks are essentially uh, essentially allow you to cut out a section of the video and just paste it on top. So you're basically taking a piece of a video and putting it on top. So we're, gonna actually, we're actually going to want to draw our own masks. So what you're going to do is you're going to click and drag it onto the top one here. So this means that our bottom video, the one down here, will actually be the original. That's the one with all the background. That's that's the base of the rest of the clones. So now we're going to draw the mask. So right here, you see this little box appeared. It's labeled Draw Mask. And now that it's selected, I can move my cursor on top, and I can add control points. So now essentially, I want to isolate this me. Now I have to take into account my shadows because if I don't, then it'll look kind of it'll look funky when my shadows cut out of nowhere. So I still want to be relatively precise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 
up like this around my shadow and you can pretty much do as many control points as you want they have this little feature where you can grab where you can like make control point then warp it like this but I don't really recommend using that considering it's tricky and you don't really need it and I'll show you why you don't need it when we're done so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come isolate this guy this character here into a big box so I'm, I put this dot here and then I put another dot down here and now we're in a box now that we've entirely circled our character we see our secondary character show up hello this is our second clone so now we already see that there's two of us but those of you with a keen eye notice a little difference if we click out of the video we can very clearly see the line of where we cut and we definitely don't want that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna color correct so down here we had the mask before now we're gonna go into color and there's color correction right here and we're gonna go put that on the new video and same concept we click here and now there's another little box it's called color correction so looking at this right now we see that it's a, it seems to be a little darker than the other scene so what we're going to do is we're going to raise the brightness oh sorry sorry wrong thing I'm in the wrong section we have to go under exposure and now we're sort of going to want to grab the mid-tones oh not too much the mid-tones until it looks very close so see already right now it's perfect we don't need to we don't need to modify it any more than this and the reason for that is when we go back here under the draw mask there's actually a tool it's called feathering and what that does is it blends both like the mask with what what it's on top so it blends it together to try to hide these imperfections so we actually don't need very much considering we did the color matching so let's say we feather it up if you move the little bar to the right it will feather outwards here so that it'll feather this way if you move this bar to the left it'll feather this way so that's up to you to decide which one thinks you, which one you think will suit you the most I'm gonna go towards the outside because I have plenty of space between my two clones so we'll bit on the outside and now see just 30 that's not very much if we click out of it we don't even see the seam anymore we hardly see the seam at all so obviously there's a few little correction things we can work on, but already we have two of our clones. Now we're basically going to repeat this whole process with the third clone who's down here. So now that we're at the feathering step, uh, if you notice carefully, now again you have to watch for the shadows, They're, they could be quite problematic. Now in this scene I didn't actually move my arm very much, so I didn't move my arm right here very much. Sorry, I'm pointing at the screen a lot thinking you see that. Uh, I didn't move my arm on the couch at all pretty much and I didn't really move my body in the other one and that's lucky for me because that means I don't have to retake this. So if I click back here and I go under the draw mask, now I can do the feathering and see what happens if I go too far, if I go too much feathering, you see this shadow here gets affected and we don't want that because that looks less real. So we want a nice balance between. Something like this looks relatively okay. If we click out of it, no, if we click out of it, now we don't see the lines. They're very well hidden. We see maybe a little line here, but a lot of fine tuning. It's just a lot of very specific fine tuning that we need to work on and that will disappear right away. Alright, so I went back to edit a little bit of the uh, exposure on this guy here. The camera seemed to have unfocused on this face, but considering the focus of the audience will be on the person in the front, that's not too big a problem, mainly because I locked the focus on my camera so that it doesn't change focusing and I didn't unlock it during this. And so that's why you see here he's a little off focus, but it doesn't really matter because the main focus of the audience will be on top. So uh, now what we're going to want to do is make sure all our videos are about this are the same length. So if you did it correctly, you should have you would have put all these clips here completely against the wall on the side, and that would leave you with clips that are slightly uneven at the end. And that's not a very big problem considering the blade tool or command B allows us to select multiple clips so if you press shift and select multiple different clips you can move the cursor to where you want it then you press command B and it'll clip all at the same level so now you know that all of these videos are exactly the same size and then you can just get rid of them and voila so now at this point we are ready to move on to 
the green screen. Now, when I recorded this, I recorded this in two parts. I recorded the camera, and I recorded my audio with the beautiful snowball microphone you see right in front of you. Uh, so, I'm actually going to have to take two files and put them together. So, let's go grab the file. Actually, let's import it directly. So, now the fun part <laughs> with this is going to be the um, the syncing of the sound and the video. Something that'll be kind of annoying, but we'll get to it. We'll get around to it. So now we go grab our video. This is our video, and you can see a beautiful close-up on my face. So what we're gonna do, I don't know if you listen, if you heard me, this is something that's very practical to do when you're doing recording and talking on the microphone, you need to calibrate both of them. You do marks. Now I don't have the fancy movie like clip thing, so I just clap my hands. And so if you listen here, you hear me say it. So I go, three, two, one, and I clap my hands. That was very unsynced, I'm sorry. Uh, and so, that means that I can come in the video, because this video started way before I properly recorded anything, mainly because it was multiple takes. So I just gotta find where I do that mark. There we go. And I move this guy here. If we listen. So now you see it's much closer now, but it's still in sync. So now we just work on that. Alright, so now if you guys check, I synced it up almost perfectly. I, I think it's pretty perfect. So if we listen. Three, two, one, mark. So it's very well synced, you know, looks good. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the scene I want to take. Just like the clones, I have to look through the footage and take the intro I want. So let's go. I'll, uh, <laughs> it's a long video, so I'll be back with you guys once I find it. And we're back. So I found the clip I want to use, and it's this section right here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select both of these by pressing Shift, and we're going to press Command Blade, or Command B. I always call it Blade because I know B stands for Blade. And then we can just get rid of this part. We don't need that whole part, and I don't need the part where I sit there smiling at the camera for a while in case I needed extra footage. So let's do the same thing. Shift U, Shift U, and Blade. Bye, bye. Now we have these. If you were recording with both a microphone and a camera, and you'll basically end up with two clips like this, right, like you can see on screen now, you're gonna to wanna to compile them, which is bring them together into one clip. So what that'll, what, how you do that is you select both of them by pressing Shift, then you, you select new compound clip. I can't talk today. New compound clip. And when you select that, it'll, get, it'll ask you for the name. Do uh, I'm going to name it compound one because I'm super original. Compound one. And now it formed this compound. Sorry, it formed the compound here. And it's also here in case you want it in your clips. Now this guy, you can move around pretty much anywhere. I'm going to move him down here. Now we're ready to work on the green screen. Now the green screen is going to be somewhat challenging because we're going to have to use masks in my case. And the reason for that is because, as you can see in the videos, there's actually... Um, I don't know if I'm going to... I'm probably not going to crop this out, but in case I do, you can look it in the frame. But on the side here, you can see the whole frame. If I put my hands out like this, I'm outside of the green screen. So we need to do masks. I need to make sure I don't do this uh, in the intro, which I checked. I don't put my hands out like a doofus like this. So that's what we're going to do now. So what we're going to do here is first of all we're going to set the, the green screen. Now what we want to do is we want to go under keying because keying is the process of of using keyframes and keyframes are basically frames of animation if you would and in our case it's animating the box around us using the green screens. It's animating the little box around us that posts a picture behind us that basically crops us out so that we don't have the image behind us so keying we're going to select this key right here the basic key now if you look here you see it auto it already sort of automatically sets my green screen in the background it gives us a little example to black now you hear see here there's a little bit of lighting but that can be easily fixed so what we're going to do is we're going to add it to here and now 
It's all right. This guy actually has to be on top. So you see, we're on top. Yay. <laughs> so uh, this is what it looks like if you weren't if you were going to just not touch anything. So you see here, it's really ugly around the edges. It's clear that I'm in front of a green screen and there's this blur here. It's all pretty disgusting, but that can be fixed. And how we're going to fix that is we are going to go grab our masks again and we're going to add a mask around this. We're going to do this step first. So add, oh, no, no, mask. We're going to add the mask to this frame here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to watch and see how far do my hands actually go. Where's my limit? See, my limit is actually pretty close. So I'm going to do control point here, here, oh, here, just a basic square. Then I'm going to bring this out of the frame and close it up. And now I can stretch this up. Oh, sorry, actually, we're not going to do that. I'm going to bring this down like that because my green screen isn't as tall as I thought it was. And this guy here, we can bring him down all the way. So, already it's starting to look a little more convincing, I find. So, next up, what we want to do is choose a sample color. So, if we look here, before we decide to edit it, let's say I bring this guy back. If we look here, we can find a point where, like here, is a very nice green up here. So we're gonna do, what we're going to do is we're going to select that region of the green screen. So we're gonna go sample color, and we're gonna select about that's about where that color was. And when we select it, that that now tells the system that's the color we want. And now we've selected that. So now next up is we want, we want to get rid of, of this blur right here. This is disgusting and we don't want it. All right, so oh, sorry. what we're going to want to do to fix that little problem is we're going to go in the color selection right here. And the color selection allows us to fine tune the colors we want and how specific we want them. So we're going to go into, into Chroma Roll-Off and see if I bring this up, it already heals our damage a bit. Same thing with Luma Roll-Off. If you look here on the scale here, you sort of see what it's trying to do. It's trying to ma make, it every, make it more even. If I boost these two to the max, it pretty much fixes our problem. So let's go back here. And let's say I go to Color like we did last time. Color Correction. Add the color there. And now we're going to go to our Color Zone. If we change the exposure, exposure. So now it's basically a lot of fine tuning around here. You can look look around with the shadows, the mid tones, the high tones, and try to fix the colors so that you match somewhat the background. It doesn't matter if you look too clean cut like we do here. We can address that later. But for now, we want to make sure you know the color is about right. So here you can see I'm already a little closer, which is swell. All right, so at this point, we have pretty much the right, the right tones and shades. The colors I might go back to work on a little bit more later, but you guys can pretty much grasp the picture. And now I sort of match more of my clones in the background. So now let's address this super sharp cut around my shoulders and my head. By going back to our keyer, Little, little detail I forgot to add, uh, you have to kill the audio of these guys, otherwise it's, gonna do, or otherwise it's gonna be a lot of background noise, and we don't want any background noise from these guys, because all the noise coming from the main video. Welcome back everybody. Today I'm gonna show you how you can make your own army of clones using It's already looking pretty good. <laughs> and for added effect, a green Now my computer's framing up a bit, but that's not the video, that's just my computer having trouble rendering it as I'm watching it. So one of the big tools you can use to modify them is the amount, the intensity, and the opacity. Let's say we bring all these guys back to normal. So this is how it l pretty much looked when you f when we first started. And when we bring amount up, it sort of fades us out, which is somewhat what we want. We don't want it super strong, but something like this is okay. Then we can you know adjust the intensity and stuff to try to make it look a little more natural. The opacity as well, how, how opaque do we want it and stuff like that. So this is about as good as I can probably get it on this with the knowledge I have right now. So it's a lot of just fine tuning, it's testing a few of the features depending on what lighting you have and everything. 
So we can still see there's somewhat of a sharp cut, or mainly around here. And that's in big part because of my lighting. I didn't have even lighting. I should have had more even lighting on both sides of me, but I, it was more focused on one side, sort of like it is now. Uh, I need to rearrange my lighting, essentially. But it's not as it's not that bad. So anyway, if once you have proper lighting, you can fine tune this a lot more. But this is really also mainly a test for me. I want to see how well I know Final Cut Pro. That's one of the reasons why I'm actually making this video, and of course to help you guys figure it out as well. So yeah, now uh, pretty much the final step will be trimming it down to size. So now I bring it here. Same concept. We can do Command A in this case, just select everything, and Command Blade, and then just buy, buy, buy. Ah, it's not too bad. Anyway, <laughs> so that pretty much concludes this tutorial on how to uh, add clones of yourself, make clones of yourself in the background using green screen and uh, keyframes for the green screen, as well as using masks to go around the clones. And if you guys have any questions or need help with any other thing in Final Cut Pro, I could make a video about it or maybe just answer you guys directly. Uh, feel free to contact me right in the comments. I'll, I'll probably be there to answer. And I will see all you guys in the next video. Peace. Welcome back, everybody. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own army of clones using only Final Cut Pro and, for added effect, a green screen. Yeah, by the way, in case you guys are wondering why I have this on my head, it's because this headset, as great as the sound and everything is, it has these two bars that, like, dig into my skull. So I put this on. It looks a little ridiculous, but, eh, who cares? It works. It's comfortable. So I'm not going to complain.